Good morning, Spell Minutes, Friday, October 22nd, 2021, day four. On today's show, John is back with another scary movie review. We share highlights of this year's pep rally. And give you a look into the salt retreat for our senior leaders. Stephanie Brown has your pilot sports. And Jenny Madison Reddick has your weekend forecast. I'm Billy Williams. And I'm Michaela Fredericks. We're your pilots. And, and this, this is, is your morning flight. Are you ready to take flight? On today's segment of What's It All About, Deacon John gives us the background on those stained glass windows we see in churches. Welcome to this week's segment of What's It All About. Hey, Deacon John, these fancy windows in the church, what is it all about? That's good you asked that. And you know, they are very fancy, aren't they? But the reason why they're so fancy is not just to be ordinate, because they actually tell us a story. In the early church, many people were poor or illiterate, and they didn't have books, and they couldn't read them if they had them. So the stained glass windows gave them a history of the church. Well, what kind of history? It gave them a history of salvation history. It gave them Bible stories. It told them about the sacraments. It told them about the saints. And it told us a lot of stuff that's not in the Bible. A lot of church history is depicted in these stained glass windows. So I'm going to run through a couple of stained glass windows for you, and we'll take a look at some very interesting ones that I picked out. The first one is of the Nativity of Christmas time, and we see Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus, and we see the, the, uh, the kings, and we see the, the shepherds hanging around. But I just want you to notice in the very center, we see Jesus, and he's covered with some red, okay, all around his, his head and the crown. Remember that red. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, okay? In the next one, this is a very special, very, very special stained glass window. This is the Dormation of Mary. We see that Mary was assumed to heaven body and soul upon her death. But she never had to suffer death. At the moment of her death, she was assumed into heaven. And this is a beautiful stained glass window, her surrounded by all the apostles. By all the apostles. Then we have another one of Jesus' parents, Joseph. And we don't really hear about Joseph after Jesus is 12. Right? We hear Joseph grew in, Jesus grew in, in, in stature, he grew in obedience. And that's the last we hear of poor Joseph. So he, he probably died sometime between Jesus' was 12th birthday and his 29th birthday. And when, G, when Joseph dies, he has a beautiful stained glass window here of him surrounded by Mary and Jesus. And again, we're going to notice Jesus is clothed in this red special stained glass window. The next one's a very interesting one. It, we have the Annunciation. And to teach people about church history was very important, but also to catechize them and teach about what happened. How did Jesus come about? So this is Mary with the angel appearing to Mary to do the Annunciation. And again, this lily in the middle, that's going to represent Jesus. And again, he's coming out of a red vase, that red vase in the center, again with the red. And the next one we have Joseph, the Annunciation of Joseph, because there's two Annunciations, one to Mary and one to Joseph. And while Joseph was asleep, the angel appeared to him and said, hey, Joe, it's okay. Mary's a good girl. Take her into your house, all right? I need you to do this. That's the will of God. And he does it. And again, we see the angel clothed all in red. We see the angel clothed in red. The next one is actually a very interesting stained glass window. It's of St. Margaret Mary, who had an apparition of Jesus coming to her and telling her to pray for the world because his heart was aching from his sacred heart. And again, we see Jesus clothed in this special red robe that he has on. And the last one I have here is the baptism of Jesus. And we have John the Baptist, the last prophet, right, baptizing Jesus. And we see that John wore camel hair and all this other very, you know, sparse stuff. But he's clothed in this red robe. He's clothed in this red robe in the stained glass window. And that's just to show how important he was. Because red showed how important because it showed royalty, it showed divinity, it showed closeness to God. But why red? Well, all the colors of the windows are very beautiful, but when you take the molten glass, you had to add a very special chemical or metal to it to make it red, and that metal was gold. So that's why red stained glass windows, when you see a lot of red, that's a very expensive window because there's a lot of gold in that window.
You know, I never knew that stained windows had that much history to it. Thank you, Deacon John. You're very welcome. Thanks, Deacon John. Now, on to the news. Just a reminder that the Spend a Day program is still in session. If you know an 8th grader interested in becoming a pilot, have them register for Spend a Day by calling the school or visiting our website. Space is limited, so be sure to register soon. There's a new scholarship opportunity available for seniors. The John F. Ward Scholarship honors Vietnam veteran John F. Ward. The scholarship provides seniors with the opportunity to win a $2,500 reward to be applied to their tuition. Seniors must write an essay in order to be eligible. Check your emails for more information. Open House is right around the corner and will be held this coming Sunday and Tuesday. There's still time to sign up for a tour of the school, so if you're interested, check our site for more details. Recently, I and a number of senior leaders were given the opportunity to attend the SALT retreat down in southern New Jersey. We got to do multiple special activities to learn and develop our leadership skills. Let's take a look. So we are on our way to SALT for senior trip of the year. Um, I'm excited, so yeah. Here's Alyssa. Hi! We're here. Everybody's here. So, we'll see how this goes. Let's be more than friends starting. You've been replaying in my head. You make me feel like I can be myself instead. I know you don't want me around. Your smile is irradiant. You make me feel like I can quit. So, give me something to work. I'm sorry, but I'm not giving up now. Salt is over. It was a really good experience, so um, I think all in all it was really valuable. Like just everything, the whole bonding experience, team bonding, learning, leadership, leadership skills. It was more about bonding than leadership. Bonding, and I think like trust in general. Mm -hmm. Like just the different activities we had to do. A lot of it was just trusting each other, even though we didn't really. I'm trying to make sure I'm gonna fall. Make sure. <laughs> Um, even though we didn't like, not everybody knew each other the same way, like, you know, but like now, it's like regardless of what we do at school, yeah. activities wise or extracurricular wise, there's them. gonna, ex there's gonna be like a different bond there mm -hmm. between us and then we had when we got here. So I'm just really all in all happy with that experience. Overall 10 out of 10. I. It was fun. I think it was great, right, Tracy? It was amazing. Thank you, Salt. What do you say about this? What do you say? Next up, we have another guidance corner where Miss Norberto speaks to the underclassmen about staying focused and asking for help. Good morning and welcome to Guidance Corner. I'm Ms. Norberto, the Assistant Director of Guidance, and today's message goes out to you freshmen and sophomores. So I just want to re-welcome you to your freshman and sophomore years. I know it's been a lot of changes for you, and you've had to overcome and transition through a lot, and I'm so proud of you. I wanted to remind you that here in the Guidance Office, we are here to help you. you some of you have met your guidance counselors, and some of you will be meeting them very soon, but of course, if you need a guidance counselor for any reason, please feel free to come in to the guidance office 135 and ask to set up an appointment with your counselor. We're always happy to help you. Some pointers for your freshman and sophomore years. Get involved. Join clubs, teams, activities, sports, anything. It's the best way to meet people, to make friends, which, by the way, the day we're filming is National Make a New Friend Day. So the best way to do that is by joining clubs and activities because you get to know people outside of the classroom situation. And also work hard. 
I know it's a different ball game in terms of doing work. Just keep working. It does count. Freshman and sophomore years absolutely count. So please make sure that you are staying on top of your work, doing your homework, studying for tests, doing all of that. If you're having trouble in a particular subject, reach out to that teacher. It's important for you as a young person now in this phase of your life to start reaching out and asking for help. It's so important. And it will also show the teacher that you're trying so hard to do well. And don't wait for the end of the year to say, oh, what can I do to improve this grade? Now's the time. Okay, you know the classes that you're having trouble in. Now's the time to start asking for help. And as I said, we're all here to help you. You have amazing teachers. We have great administration and we have a great guidance staff. So please feel free to reach out whenever you need it. Come see us, like I said. Email us. Whatever you need, we're here. But just keep trying and be patient with yourself as you transition after this crazy time we've all been through. All right, take care and God bless. Have a great day. Thanks, Ms. Roberto. Man, I wish I had gotten corn when I was a freshie. Next up, we talked to one of Spelman's talented artists, Faye Hidalgo. I recently got to sit down with Faye, and here's what she had to say about the creative process. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm here with one of Spelman's very talented, very special artists, Faye Hidalgo. Hi, guys. <laughs> Faye is a senior at this school and has done a bunch of special projects for us, like the CS1 table countertop and the, also the um, Senior Sunrise video that is posted on our YouTube channel. How are you today, Faye? I'm doing good. I'm very tired because it's been a school day and it's just <laughs> so much work. <laughs> of course. So today we're here to talk about Faye's art, of course. And um, one of my first questions is why art over anything else? Why not a sport or, a, you know, multiple clubs? Why did you choose to focus on art through high school? Well, um, originally I really thought about joining some sports during my freshman year, but um, I felt very overwhelmed because I joined so many clubs and I was just like, oh my God, I, I don't know what to do because I'm getting home late, my mom's complaining about it. So um, for art, I felt like that was like my nice little comfort space where I can actually take the time to express myself and like, you know, sit down and draw whatever I feel like doing. Um, but I also thought it would be very great if like a lot of people saw my own art and like I get their perspectives about it because um, you know I personally want to improve on it too. So I just decided to just keep doing art and just you know <laughs> seeing the nice little feedback from everybody. That's nice. So you said that art is your way of expressing yourself. So what would you say your favorite medium of art to do is? The thing that helps you express yourself the best? So I feel that my favorite medium would be like um, just, you know, plain old Sharpie pencils and like um, old fashioned paper and pencil because um, I feel like you, you have like more control over your strokes and the line art that you're doing. And um, paint is also one of my favorite mediums too. And it's just very like interesting seeing like what colors mix with what and what comes out of it and all that. So what's your favorite thing that you've drawn from your memory? Okay, um, I've done a bunch of doodles during class, but my favorite, favorite, favorite drawing was um, a nice little commission I did for one of my friends. It's for their calculator covers, and they loved Bad Bunny. So I was like, okay, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, how can I draw that in my own style? So um, I drew in a graffiti art style of uh, a bunny with like a nice little beanie hat, and it's like trying to like depict Bad Bunny in like a more graffiti tone. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, so you seem to take art pretty seriously in your mm -hmm. life. It holds a special place in your heart. Do you plan on continuing art in college? Um, I definitely plan on doing art as like a side hobby because um, I'm planning to major in computer science in college. And, um, you know, I also plan to create a little app called Helpful Touch. And I already did some designs on it because, you know, I'm into the art. Um, but yeah, I just, I really hope that I can like further develop my art into what my major is. So, yeah. So you say that you have this new app, Helpful Touch. Mm -hmm. So do you think you could talk about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so originally the app was for a little submission I was supposed to do for a program, but I really want to work on it for the future. And the goal of Helpful Touch is to provide an easy access way of um, creating a way that people can donate to 
uh, let's say daycares, hospitals, or even like small organizations that need money. And like you're just looking over the map and like you click this nice little building and you're just like, oh, okay, what, what, um, what's some things that I can donate towards? And yeah. So what was your motivation for Helpful Touch? Um, I've just had this like growing desire to like help people um, after I filmed a web series in the Philippines. That goal of that series was to help Filipino Americans find out more about their culture in the Philippines. And what ended up happening from that was um, I met with a group of people. They're called the Ifugao. They're native people. And they live up in the northern mountains of the Philippines. And I was able to see where they went to school. Um, and we had to walk a cliffside, a dangerous cliffside path. And there were like tons of rocks. There were no supports on like the walkway. They barely even had a walkway. <laughs> and um, as soon as I arrived at that school, uh, it's just, I had to take it all in because my heart was just ache because, you know, we go to school in like a nice area. Like we have a whole building set up. Their school was on a cliffside and they barely had like a, a nice auditorium set up. They had like tarpaulin rooftops, you know, those like mm -hmm. plastic roofs. And then they had um, plastic chairs there and they only had about five classrooms on the side. And our job, um, we were supposed to film like a nice uh, little school fundraiser type of thing. And we gave like school supplies to these kids. And it just like as we were passing it out, it just felt so humbling towards me and my cast that we were just like give, giving like school supplies to these kids. And after that experience, I just took a deep breath. And I'm like, I need to help kids like these because not only the Ifugao are like, you know, struggling, there's like so many kids across the world that are struggling too. So um, I wanted to start small and I wanted to start in New York first. And I thought Helpful Touch would be a great way to like start my project for helping kids like that. That is so amazing. Just Thank the you. whole experience, the whole experience, just, you know, going back and seeing everything. And I can imagine how enriching that was yeah, for you. It really was. Um, so besides Helpful Touch, is there any other projects that you're working on? Um, honestly, I've uh, been really overwhelmed with a lot of things, especially college. Um, but that's just, just one of my main goals that I want to keep working on. And hopefully I'll do good in computer science so I can program this app. <laughs> but yeah. And what, you, what colleges are you looking into? Um, I'm actually looking into going into a program called Macaulay Honors College. And I want to study uh, at Hunter College with my computer science major and hopefully develop further on that. That is great. Thank you. Thank so you. You are doing so many big things <laughs> yes. at such a young age. Mm -hmm. Do you have any words for any aspiring artists, maybe even in this school? Um, definitely don't feel discouraged to do anything you want to do. Don't let people tell you that you can't do this, you can't do that. It doesn't hurt to try. It really doesn't hurt to try. And even if it like feels like you're like embarrassing yourself, I think the experience of like doing something that you're not comfortable with doing um, really gives you that, oh, you know what, I won't try that again, but maybe I can do this better, that type of idea. Um, also, uh, I also want to give the advice of um, do things that are outside of your comfort zone, because I came from a very shy and closed bubble, and I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to like open myself to anyone, but I realized that it's so important to have people supporting you, and so important to have like friends around you, because when you're in a space where you can't think for yourself and you're isolating yourself, you need people to pick you back up and tell you that you can do this. Yeah. That is so, so amazing. <laughs> I am you. so proud of you. I'm so excited to Thank see you. what you do with your art, what you do with computer science, what you do with Helpful Touch. I will definitely be one of the first downloaders <laughs> of that app. Thank you so much, Faye, for being here today, talking no to problem. us, talking to RCS1 viewers about your art and you know sharing your message it's really important that we got that across something that means so much to you and could mean so much to somebody else so yeah thank you so much for coming here thank today. you for having me no problem <laughs> what happens when you combine a southern morgue robbery with a brand new wax sculpture museum let's find out shall we this week john capriglione reviews the classic vincent prince movie house of wax
welcome to my second and final Halloween movie review. We are in for a terrifying treat today. As I said last week, I'm doing the House of Wax. But I decided to do not one, but two different movies. I'm also doing Young Frankenstein. Both movies have amazing actors in the starring role. First off in House of Wax, made in 1953, by, directed by Andrew Dutas, it stars the horror icon Vincent Price as Professor Henry Girard, a disfigured wax sculptor who uses an interesting media for his sculptures. I'm warning you right now, this movie can be very disturbing, so I am giving you a warning. If you are easily, easily disturbed, don't watch it. Fun fact, Vincent Price's makeup was so grotesque, he actually wasn't allowed in certain buildings while wearing it. Next up is... It's coming! From the deep, dark recesses of the mind of Mel Brooks. I love him. Young Frankenstein! Like, you hear me? Give my creation life! Sky means business. Starring Gene Wilder as Dr. Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. Peter Boyle as the monster. <laughs> Marty Feldman as Igor. My grandfather used to work for your grandfather. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Oh! <laughs> Horace Leachman as Frau Blucher. And Madeline Kahn as Elizabeth. What are you going to do to me? I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> Kill the monster! See Mel Brooks' young Frankenstein. Yes, I think we could all use a good laugh. But don't see it alone. Don't miss Young Frankenstein, personally directed by Mel Blazing Saddles Brooks in black and white. No offense. Next up is Young Frankenstein, made in 1974 by Mel Brooks, who is the master of comedy. It is starring the amazingly talented Gene Wilder. This movie is about Frederick Frankenstein, or as he would say, Frankenstein. He inherits a house in Transylvania where he starts working on his grandfather's unfinished experiments with the help of his hunchback existent, Igor. Color TV already existed at this point, but Mel Brooks took a different route and wanted to go more like the Universal Monsters, so he insisted it be in black and white. These movies are great for Halloween, and I highly recommend that you watch them. I'll see you next week when I'm back on my regular movie schedule until deeper into the hol holiday season. Go Pilots, and happy Halloween! Thanks, Jonah. Next, here's Stephanie Brown with your pilot sport. Hey Pilots, I'm your sports analyst Stephanie Brown, and this week our Pilots took some major victories. Let's take a look. The Spelman football team defeated Mount St. Michael during their senior game, 1916. Aiden hanley Peary had 200 yards and threw the first touchdown to Miles Bagheri. He then rushed the second touchdown. Player of the week, Leroy Bio scored the game-winning touchdown with only 58 seconds left on the clock, returning 97 yards and sealing the deal with a field goal. He also had 21 tackles. Shout out to Logan Arroyo who had an interception with 30 seconds left on the clock. The girls soccer team played some tough games against TMLA and McClancy. Goalie Emily Gutierrez had 25 saves in the TMLA game. Congratulations to the girls soccer team for playing their senior game against St. Vincent Ferrer yesterday. The girls varsity volleyball team defeated Kennedy Catholic on Wednesday in three sets and won their senior game against Notre Dame earlier this week. Congratulations to our athletes who have been named Athlete of the Week. Leroy Bio, Logan Arroyo, Alexander Vega Santini, Aiden Hanley Peary, Brandon C., Alejandro Garcia, and Olivia McKenna. Another huge congratulations to Leroy Bio, who is nominated NYCHSFL Player of the Week for Week 6. As always, you can catch the action live by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Cardinal Spelman Bronx. And with that, fly high, pilots. A good week for us, pilots. Let's see if that continues weather wise. How's it looking this weekend, Jamie? Good morning, pilots. Today we get some rather warm weather compared to the cold week we've had. Expect mostly sunny skies with a high of 71. Saturday, the weather drops with a high of 61. And Sunday, expect the same temperatures and a mostly sunny day. To start out the week, bundle up because we have a high of 59. And that's all for this week, pilots. Have a great weekend. Back to you, Michaela and Bowie. Thanks, Jamie. That's all for today. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page so that you're alerted when new episodes premiere on Friday mornings at 8 a.m. Plus, keep up with all sporting and special events here at Spelman. You don't want to miss it. Definitely not. We're back next week with the Halloween episode of Morning Flight. Until then, hoping your news is good news, I'm Bowie Williams. And I'm Michaela Fredericks. Fly high, pilots.
have some rather warm weather compared to the cold we just had. Expect mostly sunny skies with a high of 71. Saturday, the weather. Take care and God bless. Have a great day.